Hey everyone, and welcome to Tony for the end times. Uh, I mean, Tony for you. Today we'll be going over the fiends of Nocturne, the skeletal figures shown to be immensely powerful and representing the apocalypse itself. Many know of the horsemen of the apocalypse, trumpeter, and maybe even mother harlot, but how many know the biblical lore behind them? This video will be all about the book of Revelation, the final book of the Bible, and the text that shows the end of days. Pretty heavy stuff, but extremely interesting and worth studying. There's a lot to talk about with these figures and what they mean for humanity's future. Blessed are those who read out the words of this prophecy, and blessed are those who hear it. Let's learn about the end times together, shall we? Before we get into the fiends, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Baiyi. If you're anything like me, you like to collect stuff from Japan. Whether it be old games, posters, statues, and everything in between. And in our quest to fill up our shelves, you might have also noticed that these can get pretty expensive. But there's still hope. That's where Baiyi comes in. Baiyi is a website that can place orders and bids on your behalf. They then ship the item right to you without the insane price hike. They offer tons of different storefronts like Yahoo Japan Auction, Mercari, Rakuten, and even Amazon Japan. So if you want that King Frost plush or that original copy of Strange Journey on the DS, save your money and use Baiyi. It's easy to use with support in several different languages and it ships worldwide. So my European and South American friends, I got you covered. This service has plenty of different payment and shipping methods to suit your individual needs. If you sign up using the link in the description below, you'll get 2,000 yen or about $20 off your first purchase on Baiyi. So if you're interested and want a cool 2,000 yen off your first purchase, sign up using the link in the description below. Before we get into the biblical powerhouses, we need to go over the starting fiends to build up to the end of days. The first fiend we fight is Matador. For those who don't know, a Matador is a bullfighter. Famous in Spain and Portugal for their daring show involving the red cloth called Capota de Brega, meaning cloak of struggle, being shaken to aggravate a bull into charging, then quickly sidestepping the animal. The word matador is derived from the Latin word mactator, which means killer or slayer. Bullfights are often depicted as simple entertainment, but frequently the bull is killed shortly after the performance, and it was the job of the matador to kill the bull after the festivities. The star of the bullfight is called maestro, meaning master, or more frequently called matador de toros, meaning killer of bulls. The matador in SMT is depicted as a skeleton wearing traditional matador garb with gold signifying his maestro status. His red capote skill is indicative of his intent in the fight. Matadors usually use a pinkish cloth in the beginning of the performance and then later switch to a red when nearing the finale. Matador's capote being red means he really does intend to kill you as it's nearing the grand finale. His skill Andalusia is also a reference to the location in southern Spain where bullfighting is said to originate. Dodging a bull is one thing, but dodging a demi-fiend is a whole other story. Daisojo, the flying skeletal monk with extremely disturbing lore. In East Asian regions, high-ranking Buddhist monks were appointed by the government to manage temples and the monks within. These officials were called sojo. In Japan specifically, the highest-ranking officials were called daisojo, with some regular sojo underneath them. The title of daisojo is not easily attained, as it was only given to monks who achieved enlightenment or Buddhahood. The Daisojo in-game is of great importance, as he is what is known as a Sokushun Butsu, meaning Buddhist monk preserved as is. This is a process undergone by only the most devout monks that involves years of pain. These monks undergo self-mummification over a span of 3,000 days. It involved a diet called Mokujiku, literally meaning eating a tree, consisting of pine needles, resins, and seeds, this diet would eliminate all body fat and lead to starvation. After some time, the monk would reduce and completely eliminate their water intake, which would shrink their body and organs even further. In their final days, they would be buried in a small tomb underground with only enough room to sit cross-legged to meditate and given a bell. The monks would ring the bell and continuously chant the Nenbutsu mantra, which when translated means, bow for the sake of Amitabha Buddha. Every day a monk would walk past the underground tomb and listen for the bell. When the bell could no longer be heard, the tomb would be completely sealed. If this process is seen through to completion, it will result in a naturally preserved body, including teeth and skin. The practice is said to have been popularized by Kukai, founder of Shingon Buddhism. Kukai was a very important figure in Japanese history, taking on civil engineering tasks from the government and wrote Treaties on the Ten Stages of the Development of Mind, his magnum opus. Kukai in his later years petitioned for the establishment of chapels and was concerned with the health of the country first and foremost. 
After the emperor granted his request, along with the ability to ordain more Buddhist monks, he stopped taking food and water and underwent Sokushinbutsu himself. Daisojo's design matches the mummified monks spot on, with his bell and prayer beads and the constantly held cross-legged position. Really, he should have skin, but they made him a skeleton to fit more with the other themes. Very interesting backstory to a beloved demon. Let's pivot from that macabre topic and talk about the next fiend, Hellbiker. This one has a lot less to discuss comparatively as he is a reference to the Hell's Angels. In the lore it states that he is a motorcyclist that turned into a demon due to his hatred of the world and himself. The figure itself claims to be the Angel of Hell. I don't want to get too deep in the history of the Hell's Angels since I hear they don't like it when you do that. Many consider the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club to be an organized crime syndicate, such as the US Department of Justice and Europol, but I just think they really like motorcycles. That's it. Please, don't come after me. His design is a black leather clad skeleton with a crimson scarf. He rides a motorcycle with wheels of fire. It's great, and I'm sure he isn't doing anything illegal. Let's just move on, okay? Now we're getting into the big hitter fiends. Let's talk about the Book of Revelation. The four horsemen, the punishments from God, sprung forth from the first four of the seven seals on the scroll held in God's right hand. The book of Revelation, or Apocalypse of John, is the final book of the New Testament and concerns a wide array of topics. For the purpose of this video, we'll focus on the glimpses we get of the end times. In Revelation 4, St. John was taken to a throne in heaven by one whose voice was like that of a trumpet. There was someone sitting upon the throne who had the appearance of jasper and ruby, a rainbow shone like an emerald encircling the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 smaller thrones with 24 elders sitting upon it. In front of the throne were the seven lamps blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. He describes figures similar to the seraphim chanting the Trisagion. Holy, holy, holy. In Revelation 5, the scroll of God is shown. In the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. A mighty angel asked if any were worthy to break the seals and open the scroll, but none in heaven or earth or under the earth were worthy. One of the elders spoke of the Lion of Judah, and out stepped a lamb, looking as if it had been slain, standing at the center of the throne. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits. The lamb went to the throne and took the scroll from God's hands, breaking the seals. All the elders dropped to their knees and said, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. With the backstory out of the way, in Revelation 6, the seals are broken, one at a time, and outspring the horsemen. We'll cover the horsemen in order of their release from the scroll of God. Out of the first seal came a white horse, whose rider held a bow, and he was given a crown. The horseman rode as a conqueror, bent on conquest. This white rider is the being known as Pestilence. This horseman represents conquest rather than sickness, and initially was never called Pestilence at all. Conquest is a more apt name, though in Revelation 6-8 it says, They were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, and plague, and by wild beasts of the earth. So plague is the easiest to attribute to the white rider, I suppose. Some interpretations view this white rider as Jesus Christ, and the conquest represents the spreading of his word rather than disease. Later in Revelation, Jesus appears riding a white horse as well. White is a symbol of purity, and the crown symbolizes Jesus being the king of all men, so many believe this white rider to represent God in some way. On the other hand of interpretation, many also believe the white rider to be a figure of the purest evil, or even antichrist, conquering the world and spreading a more symbolic plague of sin and hatred. White Rider appears in-game as a black-robed skeleton holding a bow riding a white horse covered in eyes. The choice to cover his horse in eyes could be a deliberate attempt to represent an angel, as many angels are described as having eyes and mouths throughout their body. Which interpretation this White Rider in SMT has is unknown. Out of the second seal came a fiery red horse. Its rider was given power to take peace from the earth and to make people kill each other. To him was given a large sword. This red rider is the horseman known as War, and it is pretty easy to understand why. It's hard to interpret the line in Revelation 6-4 as anything other than taking peace through war. Unlike the white rider that came before him, the red rider does not have any ambiguity in their role. They are evil, and aim to strip the world of peace and have humans turn on one another and pit nations against each other. His aim is to spill blood, nothing more, nothing less. 
His fiery steed represents him in many ways, as war can be an all-consuming flame that can envelop the whole world, as has happened before and may happen again. The Red Rider is often depicted with his sword held upwards, much like a pose a general may strike to rally his troops to combat. But the Red Rider has no army specifically, as his domain is death of humans by other humans. Any blood spilled is his doing, and his influence on the world must be pushed back if we are to know peace again. Red Rider in-game is a black-robed skeleton holding a greatsword held upwards, as is common for artistic depictions of this horseman. The Red Rider is destructive and treads a bloody path. Beware. Out of the third seal came a black horse. Its rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. This horseman is commonly known as Famine, and is the only one to speak upon being released. The black rider says, Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages, and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. There's a lot that can be interpreted by what little the Black Rider says here. Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages or six pounds of barley for a day's wages is not nearly enough to sustain oneself, let alone their family. The final part of the statement is of special importance, saying do not damage the oil and wine. Oil and wine are not items commonly seen by the average man in those times, and the fact the writer explicitly says not to damage them leads many to believe famine aims to value excess, luxury, and gluttony over necessity. The scales the writer carries aims to further the divide between the rich and the poor, taking what little the poor have left while seeing to the rich continue their lifestyle of gluttony and sloth. Some believe the importance of not disturbing the oil and the wine are indicative of man's faith in God, Oil and wine are sacred to Christianity, with oil being used in many rituals and wine being the blood of Christ. The horseman may take away the very basic standards of human nutrition, but faith in God will always remain. Black Rider in-game is a black-robed skeleton holding scales atop a jet black horse. Whichever interpretation you take from the Black Rider's declarations, his scales will continue to sway as time passes. Out of the fourth seal came a pale horse. Its rider was named Death and Hades was following close behind him. Unsurprisingly, this horseman is known as Death, and specifically said to have Hell following close behind him. It also says, they were given power over a fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine and plagues, and by wild beasts of the earth. You might have also noticed that Death is the only horseman not to hold anything in his hands, but rather what can be interpreted as the entrance to the underworld constantly following him. His weapon is Death itself, and to him was given power over a quarter of the earth, and sees to the casualties of his fellow horsemen. This pale rider may have the role of killing, or simply just to collect the souls of the dead for judgment. His horse being described as pale signifies the look of a body when life is drained from them. Their skin turns pale as their soul leaves them to be collected by the pale rider. Death is potentially the most passive horseman, with the most important role, as he is mentioned in other apocryphal texts as the collector of souls specifically for God to collect on judgment day for those unworthy to be cast into Tartarus, overseen by Uriel, and the worthy to be let into the kingdom of heaven. The pale rider in-game is a black-robed skeleton holding a scythe atop a pale gray horse. The choice to give him a scythe is obviously a nod to common depictions of the Grim Reaper, also referred to as death, reaping the souls of mortals to be judged. This is the only horseman whose grasp is unavoidable. Ask not for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Mother Harlot or the Scarlet Woman. One of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, came and said to me, Come, and I will show you the punishment of the great harlot, who sits on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication, and the inhabitants of earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away, in the spirit, into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her forehead a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, Mother of Harlots, and of the Abominations of the Earth. In many accounts throughout the Bible, it can be understood that Babylon is a place of great sin, showing up constantly in many books within Jewish and Christian canon as a den of blasphemy, adultery, and all manner of sin. Kings believing themselves above God and committing great sin, with God striking against them on many occasions. Sodom and Gomorrah, the raising of the city from the Persians, and the slaughter of the people from the Medes are just some accounts of how justice was sent to such a horrific city. In many accounts, from Isaiah and Jeremiah, they refer to the city of Babylon as a she, 
Even in Psalms, Babylon is referred to as a woman and prophesying her destruction, with the Babylonian slavers asking the captive Jews to sing a song. When requested, the Jews reply with, Daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction. Happy is the one who repays you according to what you have done to us. Happy is the one who seizes your infants and dashes them against the rocks. Babylon is so evil that the people and even God will be happy when the city and all within it are killed. Babylon was once the ruler of the known world and crushed many other nations in pursuit of power, holding nothing sacred, not the lives of the people or God. The entity shown in the book of Revelation is the personification of the city and the personification of power through sin itself. The woman riding on the back of the beast is Babylon, and the many crowned heads are the kingdoms who sided with her in spite of knowing her evil for personal gain. They are all drunk with the wine of her fornication, becoming one with the harlot and embracing the sin of greed and throwing away virtue. Her portrayal as a beautiful and lavishly dressed woman represents the ultimate temptation to denounce your values with the promise of power. But the beast she rides is explained by the angel. He says, The beast that you saw was and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. Perdition is a commonly used word for destruction, or even hell. The horns are explained by the angel, saying, the ten horns which you saw are the ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. These will make their war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. In Shin Megami Tensei, Mother Harlot is a beautifully dressed woman in scarlet and purple with a skeletal face. She holds a golden chalice steaming with unknown substances, and rides upon a beast with seven heads and ten horns. The beast's blank eyes represent the will of each head willingly given over to the harlot riding them, despite each wearing the crown of a king, one of my favorite demons ever in the series, and perfectly designed to biblical scripture. Last of the fiends is Trumpeter. The Trumpeter himself is but one of seven angels whose trumpet will sound, signifying the apocalypse. You may have already noticed that the seven angels were mentioned before, with voices like trumpets, and how they each represent the breaking of a seal on the scroll of God. The number 7 repeats quite frequently in fact. The number 7 represents completeness and perfection. The heavens and the earth were created in 7 days. There are 7 days in a week with Sabbath being held on the 7th day. There are 7 deadly sins and 7 great virtues. In the beginning, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were spread to the four corners of the earth, adding up to 7. And in the end times, the 7 angels will herald the coming calamity with 4 devastations and 3 great woes, adding up to 7. Now that we know the significance of the number, we can understand that the trumpeter is not a unique angel, but one of many. Each time the trumpet sounds, a new calamity will befall the earth, and assumedly, this trumpeter may be the final one, signifying the seventh seal of the scroll of God being broken. In game, trumpeter is a skeletal figure dressed in a black and white robe with pure white wings holding a unique instrument which I suppose is a trumpet. The choice of black and white coloring signifies the holy angel heralding the end times as a will from God, being pure white, and the destruction of humanity being sinful black. Beautiful depiction of the angels tasked with heralding the end. That covers each fiend. Let me know your personal favorite in the comments down below. Mother Harlot was so amazingly depicted along with her interesting lore that I can't help but think she's my favorite. Special thanks to Frankie Stoned, Mr. Eight Eyes, and Rex Zako for supporting the channel on Patreon. If you'd like to support, check the first link in the description below. Thanks for watching this SMT lore video, and I'll see you in the next Tony for You. Have a good one.